Hello and welcome to my channel. Now I'm going to continue the game. And what I want to get, where I want to get to by the end of this video is, I want to obviously when we play the game. If you was playing the game and you adjusted these, you wouldn't be able to make the boot, boot the board resize because it will spoil the game. So therefore. It's no use having it here and you move these and then the game just does it. So what, what I'm going to do is, I want to set it so that when I move these, I set these and then I press reset, that will sort of reset the game. And then it will reset back. For instance, if I was playing on a 7x6 board and I decided that I wanted to play on a 10x10 board with a line of 5, I'll simply press reset. And that will present me with a new board. And at this stage, I can either make a move or I can do force move and the computer will go first. So that is how we're going to decide to do that. That's how the game will go. Okay. Now, to achieve that, at the moment, this is this represents the board. So, um, and this is the width and the height and the line. So this has to be in there because when we adjust it, how React works is this thing called state. Every time we change something in here, it runs this function called render. So for instance, this this value is eight. If I press that, it's going to go to nine. But for you to see the nine. It will have to re-render, so it will run that, we will run that, and we will run that. It will get back the results, and then it will put them on the board with new values. Okay, can you see that changing? And that's what that's doing. So for that to happen, it has to re-render. However, we don't want it so that when we click on the board, the board changes size, but that's not good to us. So because of that, we're going to have to have some sh sort of shadow variables. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create some, I'm going to create some variables in here, and the first one is going to be called, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to copy and paste them in. Otherwise, the video is going to run too long. I've got too much to cover on this video. So I'll put them in. And uh, one of them is called started, and that's set to false. What I want, at certain times, I need to know when the thing started. Another one's called AI, and that will be the actual AI of the game. The thing that I built in the other one, that's this here. That will be the whole of this, will be that AI. With the default is going to be one, height the default is going to be one, but it doesn't matter what I set these. So as long as I don't set them to something too high, because what's going to happen is these are the defaults, and then they're going to get changed. So, but what? It, but when I in, instantiate the board, I need to set some defaults. So that's what this is for. Okay. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to work backwards through this thing this is the one that builds the GUI now this is no good because it's taking it's got a parameter on it so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to in fact yeah I'm gonna take this parameter off here so I'm gonna take it off there and then when I come here it's gonna still do it because it's got some default values so what I'm going to do is I'm going to also take the parameter off here so it's got no parameter and then the next thing it does is it calls get bored okay
But what I want to do is Well, I need to remove these parameters from here. So I'm going to get rid of that. And that can actually stay there. A lot of this code was just for testing. So what I need to put in here is, I'm going to, Pay some code in. So what this does is this enum started at the start of the game is set to false. I need to know when the game starts. And the reason I want to know that is every time I do a render, I don't want it to have it's how React works is when I when when the game starts, the code starts here, and it needs to do this and it needs to do this. So what it is, I need, I need to I need to put some initial values for this. I need to put some initial values for this. I don't even think I need to do this, but I'm going to leave it because obviously I'm doing one by one, so it doesn't really make a difference. Okay, so what that will do is that will sort some initial values. Otherwise, otherwise it won't work. Now, what's going to happen with these values is they're going to get overwritten when the game starts. So you want you will happen so quick that you won't even see it. But I guess you need to put some initial ones in because this part runs first. So this what this is doing is. If num start equals false, it will run this. So the first time, and then at the end of it, it will set it to true. So it will only run this once, and then it will never run it again. And then it will get the settings from get board. Then all of this can be kept because that's just doing that's just that's just doing rendering. So even so, I was testing before. Now that I'm doing the proper thing, that can stay. So now. I have to go to get board. So get board, we need to go there now. And uh, this get board isn't going to take any parameters at all. And a lot of this is going to go. And so some of it will stay. Now this one's getting the state if on the board, but we're not gonna do that anymore. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this line out. I'm gonna take that out. And I think we only, I only have to write one line, and that's the board. I'm gonna have to add a function to that new board. So before it was pointing to some test thing. So now I'm gonna to have to point it to something that will get the real board. And I haven't created this function yet, but I'm gonna go and create it now. Okay, let me just check. So this is doing the same thing I did before. But before I just had a test value in here. That was the same. This is gonna remain the same. However, I need the width. However, I can get the width from get the width from the enum. 
So all I need to do, well, I need to do more, but I need to, um, I need to add that function in there. Okay, so I'm going to open here. I'm going to add a function under here. And it's, the, the function is going to be very similar. It's going to be similar to the print board. So I'm going to paste it in and talk about it. If I open print board and you compare both of them, you'll see that it does, it nearly does what a print board does. Apart from it, um, all it does, it gets the other board, which is a full, it's a board with a border, and it converts it to a, to the smaller board using this convert to thing, function, convert to array, that I talked about before, and that's all that does. So I've added that. So what else do I need to do? What I now need to do is I need to think about starting the game. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to think where to put this. I want to put, I'm going to create a function called init underscore. In it, and in it, I want to do this dot underscore this dot start game, and now I'm going to create that this dot start game. So this is just in case I wanted to um, put some code in just before the game starts. Now to start game, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the state out using the destructor um, syntax. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to I'm going to go to the state which is what these are controlled by, and I'm going to get the width, height, and the line. Okay, so this is in the start game. So what's going to happen is when we click reset, it's going to call start game. It will, that's the only time we're going to start, or when the game starts, it will call in it. I'm going to set it to call init and then init will call start gate game. In fact, I'll do that now. I'm going to create a function under here and this is a lifecycle method. And what it means is after everything is loaded, it's a bit like Java, it's a bit like jQuery get ready, but it's for JavaScript. After everything is loaded, then it will run this function which is in it so so what would happen is it will do a render for it when it first starts it will do one render then when it finishes that render it will say component did mount and then it will do in it so when i said earlier i'm going to set it to some default values and there can be anything this is why, because after component did mount, it will overwrite anything. Okay. That's going to run. That's going to run in it. That's going to do start game. Start game, we're going to get the values of this. Remember, the board is already, everything's already there. And it will, put, it will actually look like this. That's how it would look, because I've done one by one. Okay. So, start game. First, it's going to get the width, height, and line. Okay, that's the first thing it's going to do. Then, it will get the things 
and it will set these, which are set to 1. That's the next step that it will do. Okay, so once the only time these will get set is after you press reset. So, for example, if I change these to whatever, it won't do anything to this. It won't set the only time it will set it is when I press reset button. So, that's how we achieve the effect where we don't want to move this and then these automatically update. So we don't base we don't base this off this we base it off we base it off these ones here, okay. So we get the value of the state, which is we get in the width, height, and the line, okay. That's how we start the game. Next thing we do is them two values that were set for one, we set them to these values here. So that, for instance, they'll be set by now it will be set to seven by six instead of one by one. Okay. The next thing we do is I'll paste it in and I'll talk about it. The AI we're gonna render it again. Like I showed you where did I show you it again? I showed you it in Bill GUI. Can you see? When it starts it sets it to a one by one board and then it goes ahead and renders and you can use the otherwise if, if it wasn't set to something if it wasn't set to anything meaningful then it wouldn't work you don't come up with an error and you wouldn't be able to start the game so we've got to set it to something meaningful just to get it started so I've set it to that and it's going to come here when it gets here, so remember the board's already, so it's going to start up. It's going to run all this code. That's going to be a, that's going to be a legitimate value. It's going to set start it to true, so then it won't run this again. It will only do it once during the game, and then when it comes to here, after it, after everything's loaded. It will override what I did there with this. Now I haven't put a parameter in for the line, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and add a constructor, add add another variable to this called line. I'm going to set it to line. Okay. So when someone messes around with these and the press reset, it will just it will just bring a new instance of that thing. It will overwrite the other one. And bring an, and put a new one there. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is at this stage, can you see it's it's all it should be all set now, I think. So as you can see that hasn't changed. You know, let me just change all of these to see what happens. Can you see what happened then? I've missed a thing there, and I sh so, so this is an opportunity for me to demonstrate again because I've missed that. Okay, I'll put that in. So it's gonna start. It should start again. Normally, it resets when you say. Fast have made it smart, but anyway. I'll put some stuff in there trying to get trying to get it to reset. 
Otherwise, I'm gonna have to press re. I'm gonna press. Yeah, it's refresh now. Okay. So that's how it is. So that means the one by one board that we had. Where is it? So that means it started. So we've got a problem here. It ran this, it went to here and built on this and it was build GUI. Right. So it came in here. For the first time it does that. It sets it to a one by one board. I've hard coded that in. It's gone there, set started to queue. Constant settings you could this get board. And then it's done that. So it's get board. What has get board done? Get board has built a board using that thing, set, using the one by one board. And it's shown it on the board. And after it does that, it comes to component demand. And that's the, this any. This any calls start game. Start game gets the value of the state, so that width it gets the value of the state from the one, so it changed. So that means in this line, we change the width to sort seven, we change the height to six. This AI is so always get so we set up a new board, we initialize the board. We print the board and they do let board equal this here and then what happens it doesn't work. Now the reason it doesn't work is it does all of this but it doesn't do a render. So when I press on plus or if I press anywhere, it's gonna do a render because I've changed the value. So if I so if I set the height to seven, it's done a render and set the height. Now if I set it to something else nothing happens which is what we expected okay now this that's not ideal for us so what we want to do is we want to get it so that so that we don't have to do anything to show the board so all i have to do is add a line in here this starts set state I want the pass in here. I've just got the board here. Okay. So I've just got the board here. So what I have to do is pass the board in. And that's it. Now I'm going to do it the long way. Whoops. I'm going to do it the long way first and then I'll show you the quick way. Okay, so I want to set state. This is the state, and you've got a special function to set the state. And as soon as you call this function, it, when it does a render. So, that's how you call it. But because I've given that the name board, I can do an actual shortcut here, and I can just do that. And that's, that's a shortcut to it. So that should be it now. Now it's still not going to work as we expected because we haven't hooked up the button. But however, we can test it. We can just add. We can just add four of them there, and then it should save it. It should recognize five changes, and then it should render. And as you can see, what happened? So what happened is a one board came, and then another one came. But to be honest. With React, it does something called um, batched, batched renders. That means that when I press the plus, because I'm a human pressing it, it does a render every time. However, when it's a computer doing a lot of renders, it sort of batches them together and it might only do one render. So even though we've done one render from a one by one board onto a seven by six board it may back because it's a computer doing it 
and it can do it extremely fast, like in a millionth of a second. It may bash both of them together and just do one render. Okay? So the other thing left for us to do is get this button to work. So what it is, I forgot which button this was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to find it. Reset. Oh man. I can, I can easily find out which one it is. Oh man. It's not that one. Um, right, let me just close some things. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out and just see if it still works. Okay, it's not that. Not that. In fact, I just remembered. I was getting confused then. Um, I think it's this one. Game control. I think it's this. Okay, let me just get rid of that. If I comment that. Okay, this doesn't work, so what I have to do is I have to um, wire this up now, so I can take this out, I know it's this, so what I have to do with this is I have to um, add an add a attribute to it, so I'm going to wire this side up, this dot p o p s. That I'm gonna call it handler. I'll call the other ones handlers. This style handler, and I just call item. Okay. So what I need to do, what I need this to do, I need this is this is in a separate class to this, but I want this. To call that v that um that star game thing. So first I do it, first I do it that, and then I actually go to the game thing channel. I have to find it. Here it is. Build control. Let me just make this more like that. Okay. I just have to add something on here. So I'm going to just do that to it. And I'm just going to add an attribute. So I'm going to add a I'm going to call this dot can I call it control handle control wait there handle control handle handle control dot Find this. Remember, I'm calling this some another function. And now it's giving me an error, and that's because I haven't, I haven't, I haven't created this yet. So if I create this, handle control, and I do e.
And let's just give it a test. Um, it's in the top somewhere. That looks good. Um, yeah, I made it right here. I made it put it on the line here. Okay. So now when I press that, so it's passed it all the way through. That's why it's on. Um, because if I go to game control, there isn't a, there isn't a console login here. But if I go to handle control, there's one there. So what we can do is I think that's what it's called. So as soon as I finish this, when I move the dials and I press reset, okay, that's working there. Can you see? I'm going to the screen now. So I can set the board to anything I want. So what I looked looking at these extreme can you see how that curve is missing the bats? Or oh, 80 would be enough for anyone, I think. So I'm going to set that curve to some other value. Let me have a look. All right, let's just, let's see how 10 looks. I'll just set it to eight. Eight should be safe. Okay. In fact, ten. Let's do ten. Okay. So now I've achieved my goal of being able to move these and when I press reset it will put a new it will put the new board style and it will um it will make a move. It not I'm not make a move. But it would have the AI ready to play. So all we have to do, all we have to do that is put the put the moves in, etc. Now it's getting the board from the AI. Okay. Anyway, I'm going now. Until the next video. Bye.